Hey everyone, it's Asha, and welcome back to Reading with Asha. I mean, when you read, you're like going into a whole different world. So for today's video, I am doing a video where you guys sent me book tropes that you love or that you want to read more books of, and I'm going to recommend some books that I liked in that trope or loved, whatever it may be. And before we get started, I wanted to thank you all so, so much for 2,000 subscribers. I'm so happy and grateful and excited to be sharing all of this with you and we can all share it with each other and talk about it and everything like that. I literally love doing this and it feels like such a nice little community. It just feels like a warm hug to me. So I love it and I'm so excited and yeah, I think I'm gonna do a giveaway when we hit 5,000 subscribers and buy people books off of their book wish list. Maybe like five people for 5,000. I'm so excited to continue growing on this channel and sharing all of this amazing book recommendations and things that we love all with each other and it's just really fun and exciting for me and it's something that I definitely have always wanted to do ever since I got into reading like I really got into reading like two years ago I would say right when quarantine started I think that's when a lot of people got back into it I always liked reading as a kid like I love reading as a kid but then when I got into high school I didn't really care too much so let's get right into it so the first one that I got wasn't necessarily a trope but it was just asking for recommendations that's similar to Bridgerton I don't know if it's talking about Bridgerton in the books or the show but kind of just like a similar concept so for this one I have one of my favorite series ever which is the selection series I absolutely love this series specifically the first three books I read these in like two days because they're so good the last two books are not that good but the first three ones are amazing and if you liked Bridgerton you would absolutely love this series I didn't think I would love it that much because it is YA and Bridgerton is obviously not YA but it was so so good I love it so much and they are coming out with a movie but it literally hasn't even been in production yet like there's not very many updates with it or anything like that so but if you like that, I would totally recommend the selection. I think you will love it. Next, we have a very specific trope, which is mom's best friend's son. So the first one I'm gonna recommend for this, you guys probably already know, either reading the books or watching it from the show, but I'm gonna say the Summer I Turn Pretty series. I only have the first book right here because the rest of them are on my shelf and I didn't feel like pulling them out. But this would be the perfect thing because the girl kind of has a love triangle with both of her mom's best friends, two sons, and they have a whole beach house and everything. So it's also perfect like little summer romance, that type of thing. It wasn't my favorite series ever. I did really like the TV show though. So I would recommend it. And I think it's good for that trope. And then the next book, I feel like I literally heard zero people talk about it. I read this when I was in that period and everyone was in that period of like we all just started reading and we would just go to the bookstore and look at the back of books and buy them instead of like getting recommendations off of book talk and stuff which I love but I also love getting a ton of good recommendations and just trusting everyone's recommendations and like reading everything that everyone's reading and seeing what I think about it that type of thing but this is The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund and I absolutely love this book when I read it. I thought it was so cute I'm pretty sure it's YA. I'm pretty sure I got this in the YA section. But if I can remember correctly, which I think I am remembering correctly, the um, love interest in this book is the mom's best friend's son. That's just what I remember, I think. But I thought this was so cute, and it's a high school romance too, which we're about to have a whole thing for that, because I love high school romances as well. But this is a great book for that too, in case you guys have probably never heard of it. It's a really cute little YA book, so I totally recommend it. Next, we have one of my favorite tropes. Also, in case you haven't noticed yet, I'm not going to explain like what exactly goes on in every single book because there's a lot of tropes and a lot of books that I wanted to share, so I'm not going to go into detail about it, and I feel like sometimes I don't like doing that. I kind of like to go into a book blind. That's why I'm really not much of a trope person, but if it's like the premise of a book, so this one, the next one is going to be high school romance. I love that. I just love it and most of them are YA too. So I have like five or six recommendations for that and some of them are on Kindle Unlimited too. First one is also one that I haven't heard too much about. I read this in high school in English class and we just had to read like a free choice book and it was one of those books I just went to Barnes and Noble and I was like okay that sounds good this one's called if I'm being honest I think the cover is so cute like so 2018 Pinterest aesthetic that's what it's reminding me of I really thought this book was so cute though and I loved it and she has another book too that's like similar to this I think I haven't read it yet but I kind of want to next we have every last word which is probably one of my favorite books of 2022 so far 
This is about a girl who has OCD, so it digs into that a lot, and I really, really like that. And I just love everything about the book. It's a high school romance, obviously. Super fun and easy to read. I feel like all high school romances are. And then the next one that I have a physical copy of is Tell Me Three Things. I'm sure you've heard of this. It's such a cute little high school romance. I probably rated this a five stars just because they're so easy and fun to kind of get through, if you know what I'm saying. Two more high school romances that I really liked. They're both by Colleen Hoover is Hopeless and Regretting You. And I'm pretty sure Hopeless is a high school romance. If I can remember correctly, I'm pretty sure it is. And then Regretting You definitely is. So th that's a really good one too. And then one that is very much not young adult is Punk 57. That's a high school romance and it's a very steamy romance. It wasn't my favorite ever, but it was high school romance. So I did give it probably a good rating because of that. Next, the trope is the guy likes the girl more. And I don't read a ton of books with this trope, but two recommendations that I do have is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan, which was a really, really cute little love story romance and I love Mia Sheridan and her writing. I prefer Archer's voice over this for sure because that's like my one of my favorite books ever. I really really like her writing and I thought this book was really good and easy to read and quick to get through that type of thing. Then the second one that I have I actually read it on my Kindle and that was The Deal which is the first book of the Off Campus series and I feel like a lot of the books in the Off Campus series if I'm remembering correctly is a lot of the guy liking the girl more or the girl like hiding it. So I read it like a year ago, but I'm pretty sure I remember the main character Garrett liking Hannah more than she liked him and she didn't want to go on a date with him or any of this stuff because she knew he was like a player and she liked a whole different guy. Yes, he definitely liked her more. So that's another one that was really good, fun and easy to read. Next up we have Small Town Romance, which I absolutely love and I have two recommendations for this one. The first one being Bright Side by Kim Holden, which this book literally made me ball my eyes out for so long and I also feel like this book is huge. I hadn't heard too many recommendations or anything like that about this. I did hear Steph Bohr recommend it which of course gotta go with her. She's like the OG book queen in my eyes because she's like the reason I got into reading by watching YouTubers if you know what I mean, booktube. And this was recommended by Colleen Hoover so I was like okay I'll love this. Some of it was cringy but once you get past that and then the next one is Archer's Voice which I just talked about this and I absolutely love this book so, so much. And this is the kind of thing that you're just going to have to take my word for it. Know the trope and take my word for it. You don't even know what the book is actually about because it's so good and you can trust me. I love Archer's Voice. But it is spicy and I think it's kind of like an insta-love type of book. So if you hate that, probably don't read it and it's definitely a spicy book. This one, I feel like is kind of spicy, but it's a small time romance Oh my god, you guys. My dog is sleeping on the floor, and I don't know if you guys just heard that, but he farted so loud. Alright, so the next trope is another one that I really, really like, and that is boarding school romance, and I have two recommendations for this one. So first of all, we have an obvious choice, which is going to be Looking for Alaska. I read this again at the beginning of when I started reading and I absolutely love this one. I know a lot of people like it. It's by John Green and he is just an amazing, amazing writer. So I really like this book and the show is also on Hulu. I don't know if it's still on Hulu, but it was really, really good. And then Anna and the French Kiss, this book will make you want to go to Paris. It's so cute and I absolutely loved it. I have the collector's edition, which is literally just adorable and it has the nicest detailing ever and I'm obsessed with it. And then there's another one that I know a lot of people like and a lot of people want to talk about, which is A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. That is a high school, or not, it's like a high school boarding school romance. But I hated that book. I'm going to talk more about it in my June reading wrap up, but I literally gave it a two stars and I almost threw up on like every single page because I'll tell you more in that video, but it was just not, not for me. Next, we have a very, very beloved trope, which is gonna be Childhood Friends to Lovers, and I'm gonna recommend two books that you've definitely already heard about for this trope 10 million times, which is going to be Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. It's the classic Childhood Lo Friends to Lovers trope book. I absolutely love it. Every Summer After, this just came out. It's actually her debut novel and it was such a good debut novel. This was definitely very similar to Love in Other Words as a lot of people know, but I think that's completely okay because when you read a book that you love, you kind of want to read something just like it and that's what this really did for me and I loved it. It was so summery, so cute. So 
These are two of my recommendations for that trope and also The Infinity Between Us, which I read on my Kindle. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It wasn't my favorite book ever. I think I gave it a three stars. It had really good vibes, everything like that. Good childhood friends to lovers, but I, I'm sure a lot of people would love it, so that's why I'm recommending it. Then the next one is Childhood Friends to Lovers, but young adult version because these books are definitely not young adults. And the one that I'm going to recommend, of course, is going to have to be A Thousand Boy Kisses. This is one of my favorite books of 2021, and I absolutely love this book so much. It made me look at life a different way after I read it, and I think a lot of people could say that. Even though it's just a young adult book, it means so much, and it's such a good book. It's definitely a little bit immature, but I absolutely loved it, and it did make me ball my ass out, so. The next one is not childhood friends to lovers. It's just friends to lovers, so adult friends to lovers, whatever it may be, and wait, no, this is also childhood friends to lovers. I was gonna say the song of Achilles, but it's also childhood friends, I guess. Not as much of a deep connection though, so I'm still gonna go with Friends to Lovers. The Song of Achilles is really good, and it's Greek mythology, so if you don't like that, don't read it, but I absolutely loved it, and I didn't even think I would like Greek mythology, and I'm kind of glad that I went into that book blind, because if I knew that it was about Greek mythology before I read it, I probably would've been like, oh, I don't care about that, whatever, and then I read it, and now I am obsessed with Greek mythology books, so try it out. Don't. Don't let it set you off, okay? You might not like it. If you don't like it, then okay. But you found something else out about yourself, so let it be. Okay, so the next trope is rock star slash band romance and not romance, just that kind of trope in the book in general. So first, we obviously have Daisy Jones and the Six. This is about Daisy Jones and the band, the Six, and there's some romance in there. I wasn't obsessed with this book, but I think the way it was written was so cool and creative. It's basically like an interview the entire time where they just go back and forth and I really thought it was cool and super easy to read and it was so fun to read. But some things in it, it also has like a cheating trope and I wasn't obsessed with that. I kind of hate that. The next one is Mary Jane. I just love Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blah. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but I literally was so obsessed with this book. I would recommend it a million times and it literally put me in a reading slump a little bit, okay? I had to force myself out of it, but I was so obsessed with this book. It's not a romance and I actually found out that it's a literary fiction, which I feel like, oh my God, I don't care about literary fiction. I probably wouldn't read that. This book changed my life. I'm obsessed with this book. Like it's definitely... Right now, this is my favorite read of 2022, and I think a lot of people can say that, and I definitely want to read more from this author. So, I'm obsessed with that. And then another one that I don't hear a ton about right now, I heard a lot about it maybe like two years ago, is Serenading Heartbreak by Ella Fields, I want to say. I'm not positive if that's the author's name, but it was on Kindle Unlimited, and I read it, and it was pretty good. I think I gave it like a three or four out of five stars, probably a three. That's what I would give it now. But it was like a band type of romance, that type of thing, and it was really cute and easy to read, fun to read, whatever, good for your Kindle, unlimited challenges. The next trope is also one of my favorite tropes ever. Like if this isn't a book, it's probably gonna be a five star for me, and that is Found Family. So we have Mary Jane once again. I absolutely love the Found Family trope in this book. It's so good and it made it definitely five star for me. I felt like I was right in with this family and I just loved it so much, so I recommend that. And the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, the found family in this series is just so good. I just love it so much. Like, oh, it just makes my heart wrench thinking about it. I absolutely love this. This is a steamy series though. So if you don't like that, don't read it. Probably you won't like it or you can skip over it. This doesn't really have very many steamy scenes in it. It's just kind of like, whoa, like where did that come from? That's kind of what it like. The next trope is Age Gap and I'm really not a huge fan of this trope. I know a lot of you guys love it. For me, I wouldn't go out of my way to find a book with this trope. I would read a book if it was recommended, but it's not like something I love. But the book I'll recommend for this trope is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. If you guys like age gap romance, you will probably love this. I found it pretty weird. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that if you kind of think age gap is a little bit weird. But I found it kind of weird. I know a lot of people also like The Confidence of Wildflowers. I haven't read it yet, but I plan on maybe reading it like on my Kindle or something. The next one is Grumpy Sunshine, and I don't really feel like I read a ton of books with this trope, or I probably do and don't even realize it, because I don't really go like looking for the trope, like a Grumpy Sunshine trope, if that makes sense. But I would recommend The Love Hypothesis for this one. This is definitely Grumpy Sunshine. Why am I saying sunshine? This is definitely Grumpy Sunshine, and it is so cute. 
and a fun little read and the cover is just so adorable and I love that for this. I would also say the summer I turned pretty is a grumpy sunshine because one of the love interests is a grumpy boy, that's what I'll say. Then there's a reverse grumpy sunshine and I would recommend most of all you by Mia Sheridan which I just talked about. Next is fake dating and I really don't like this trope whatsoever so I've only read like one book with it which is The Love Hypothesis which is pretty good. So I do like this one and I feel like maybe I've read more fake dating books but I think if I can't remember them off the top of my head it probably wasn't that good so I shouldn't recommend it. So yeah. Next is probably one of the most loved tropes ever by people which is enemies to lovers and I have three papers backs for that one and a couple of books that I run on my Kindle. So first we have The Love Hypothesis, which I just talked about. This is also academic rivals to lovers. Is it right? Are they rivals? It's academic trope, I guess, but that's a good one. This one is The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is the second book to the Bridgerton book series. If you like this, you'll obviously love the show or just if you like this trope and you don't want to read the book, watch the show. So good. I'm obsessed with the show. Next we have Red, White, and Royal Blue, which was obviously huge on TikTok last summer. It was going crazy. It was so, so good. I really like this book by Casey McQuiston. They're an incredible author. I feel like I can't talk right now. Next we have a few that I read on my Kindle, which was from Luke Off With Love. I really like that book. That's by Mariana Zapata, and most of her books, if not all of them, are free on Kindle Unlimited, so definitely check that out if you are interested. Also, the one that I talked about earlier, if I'm being honest, is Enemies to Lovers, and then another book that I read on my Kindle, Punk 57, which I talked about earlier, which is by Penelope Douglas, I'm pretty sure. I want to say it is. But those are most of the tropes that I got recommended that I feel like I had good recommendations for. So let me know if you've read any of these books. Try some out if you haven't already. And my next door neighbor's dog is barking, so that's why I'm trying to end the video kind of quickly. But I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. I'm so excited to be sharing all this with you. I know I said it a million times, but I really am so excited. And I love you guys all so much. And make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.